Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 13, Lecture 1, The Gingiva in Health. Healthy tissue is free of inflammation and has not been altered by disease or trauma. See Figure 13.1, page 224. This image shows periodontal health with coral pink gingiva. Note the distinct difference in appearance between the keratinized gingiva and the non-keratinized alveolar mucosa. In health, the tissue appears uniformly pink. Blondes with a light complexion have a lighter shade of pink. Brunettes with darker complexion have a darker shade of pink. Pink gingiva is easily distinguished from darker alveolar mucosa, which will usually appear red due to the blood vessels that can be seen through the tissue because it has no keratinization. Tissue may also have racial pigmentation. This slide shows pigmentation of the gingiva and illustrates how gingiva can vary in color between different patients. You can see this image on page 224, figure 13.1b. The contours of healthy gingiva are smoothly scalloped at the gingival margin, tapered slightly coronal to the CEJ, and the papilla are pointed and completely fill the space between the teeth. Tissue stippling in health. Stippling varies greatly from individual to individual, and in some patients, healthy tissue may not exhibit a stippled appearance. The margin of the gingiva is at or slightly coronal to the CEJ. Clinical features of gingival inflammation. In disease, plaque biofilm at the gingival margin stimulates the host immune response. Inflammatory response to bacteria results in clinical changes. Changes involve free and attached gingiva and papilla. Acute gingivitis is of short duration and resolves upon professional and good self-care. Chronic gingivitis may exist for years without ever progressing into periodontitis and resolves upon professional and good self-care. The color in gingivitis. In acute gingivitis, increased blood flow causes tissue to appear bright red. In chronic gingivitis, the tissue appears bluish red or purplish red. This image shows slight marginal redness in early gingivitis. See figure 13.5 on page 227 for more information. This image shows marginal and papillary redness. This is also figure 13.5 on page 227. This image shows slight marginal and papillary redness. You can get more information on page 227, figure 13.6. Fiery red marginal gingiva and papilla. This is figure 13.6b on page 227. Increased tissue fluid enlarges marginal and interproximal gingival tissue. It can be localized to a few areas or involve the whole mouth and be generalized. 
The tissue swelling in gingivitis may cause the position of the gingival margin to move coronally further above the CEJ than in health. There is no destruction of periodontal ligament fibers or alveolar bone in gingivitis. For more information, see figure 13.12 on page 230. Bulbous papillae. In gingivitis, the papillae may be enlarged and appear to bulge out of the interproximal space, as seen in the papilla between the central and lateral incisors in this clinical photograph. For more information, see page 228, figure 13.7. In gingivitis, the papilla may be blunted and missing, as seen in the papillae between the central and lateral incisors. See figure 13.8 on page 228. The papillae may have a concave appearance in the mid-proximal area as seen in the papillae between the second premolar and the molar in this clinical photo. See page 228, figure 13.9. Inflamed gingival tissue may be soft and spongy. The inflammatory fluids can cause the gingival tissues to feel somewhat like a moist sponge. See page 228, figure 13.10. In gingivitis, fluid in the tissue can cause the tissue to appear smooth and shiny with a stretched appearance. See page 229, figure 13.11. Local factors can play a role in gingivitis. Inflammation causes the gingival tissues to bleed easily. Inflammation results in ulceration of the pocket wall. Bleeding is an important indicator of inflammation. The extent of inflammation can be localized or generalized. Localized inflammation is confined to tissue of a single tooth or group of teeth. Generalized inflammation occurs in all or most of the mouth. The distribution of inflammation can be papillary, where the inflammation is confined to the papilla, marginal, where the inflammation is confined to the gingival margin and papilla, or diffuse, where the inflammation is throughout the gingival margin, papilla, and attached gingiva, extending to the mucogingival junction. Descriptive terms are combined to create a verbal picture of the gingiva. This image shows localized diffuse inflammation. Notice that the redness and edema of the gingival margin, papilla, and attached gingiva in the mandibular anterior sextant. This image shows generalized diffuse inflammation where the inflammation extends to the gingival margin, papilla, and attached gingiva throughout the entire mouth. This image shows localized marginal inflammation. Note the reddened tissue color along the gingival margin, extending down into the papilla on these maxillary anterior teeth. This image shows diffuse inflammation, which involves the gingival margin, papilla, and attached gingiva of the mandibular anterior sextant. In health, the gingiva is a uniform pink color with tapered margins, pointed papilla, and a firm consistency. In gingivitis, the gingiva is red to purplish red with rolled margins, altered papilla, and a spongy cons consistency. Healthy tissue does not bleed. Acute gingivitis is of short duration. Chronic gingivitis is a long-lasting gingivitis. Chronic gingivitis may persist for years without ever progressing to periodontitis. 
terms such as localized, generalized, papillary, marginal, and diffuse are used when describing gingival inflammation. This concludes Perio Chapter 13, Lecture 1.